It is important that staff are vigilant to prevent the development of phlebitis or infection secondary to insertion of a cannula. Regular assessment of the dressing, cannula site and the arm of the cannula insertion is required to minimise the risks associated with developing phlebitis as well as infection. Assessment of the cannula should occur at least once per shift for a PIVC that does not have continuous intravenous fluid therapy or has a low volume infusion to keep the vein open. If the patient has continuous IV fluid therapy in progress, then the cannula site should be assessed every four hours. Cannula patency needs to be assessed each time it is accessed prior to the starting of any infusions or bolus medications. Patency must be confirmed by flushing the cannula with sterile 0.9% sodium chloride as charted in the PRN medications. Prior to accessing a PIVC, staff should perform hand hygiene and scrub the hub, meaning cleaning the PIVC valve with a 70% alcohol swab for 30 seconds and letting it dry for at least 15 seconds. If a PIVC is found to be blocked or tissued, cease flushing the device and consult with the medical officer to see if there is a need for reciting of the cannula. Do not try and force the flush through. The blocked or tissue cannula should be immediately removed. The Visual Infusion Phlebitis tool attributes a score to the IV site from 0, where there is no signs of phlebitis, to 5, where there is advanced thrombophlebitis present at the cannula site. Each level of the score provides recommendations of how to manage the cannula and what actions should be taken. The Visual Infusion Phlebitis tool should also be used to assess the insertion site each shift, looking out for patency of the cannula, erythema, tenderness, palpable venous cord, pain, swelling and dressing integrity, noting if the PIVC dressing is damp, loosened, no longer occlusive or visibly soiled and if it is, it should be replaced. After your assessment, your findings should be documented in the patient's electronic health record under the iView section. When a patient is transferred between departments of facilities, an assessment of the cannula should occur and also be documented. Ideally, a cannula should be removed as soon as possible after it has been determined that it is no longer required. A daily review to determine if the cannula is still required should occur and this needs to be documented in the patient's health record. If a patient's need for the cannula changes, for instance taking a sufficient oral intake or fluids later in the day, or medications are changed from intravenous to an oral equivalent, the need for the cannula should be reassessed then. To reinforce these periodic checks, Patients should be encouraged to notify staff if the PIVC site becomes painful, red, inflamed or uncomfortable. Patients must be advised not to touch the PIV insertion site or dressing, not to touch any attached giving sets and or infusion pumps and to keep the site dry and minimise excessive movement whilst the PIVC is in situ. If the patient is showing any signs of systemic infection, such as pyrexia, tachycardia, raised white cell count, increased respiratory rate, hypertension or rigors, then a PIVC-related infection needs to be considered. If a PIVC is suspected of causing infection, the dressing should be removed to allow a thorough examination of the site. Signs of an infected cannula may not be obvious and these may develop over the following hours to days. The medical officer should be notified if the cannula is evidenced as causing infection. Once the cannula has been removed, two sets of blood cultures should be taken from the arm the PIVC was in from two different sites, followed by a wound swab of the PIVC site to be sent for microscopy, culture and sensitivity. The PIVC tip 
the top two to three centimeters should be placed in a sterile specimen jar and also sent for microbiology, culture and sensitivity. If the removal of a normally functioning cannula is to be elective and the PIVC is less than 72 hours old, the attending medical team must be contacted prior to its removal. The procedure for removing a PIVC begins with the clinician performing hand hygiene, donning non-sterile gloves and wearing eye protection. PIVC dressing should be carefully removed to avoid any discomfort and accidental uncontrolled removal of the cannula. Once the dressing has been removed, clean the site thoroughly with a 70% alcohol swab and allow to air dry. Withdraw the cannula and apply digital pressure with sterile gauze until hemostasis has been achieved. It is important to examine the PIVC to ensure that the whole of the device has been removed and it is intact with none of the device retained in the patient. Once hemostasis has been achieved, cover the site with a dressing or tape which should be removed after 24 hours. If the patient is to be discharged home before then, inform the patient that they can remove the dressing after 24 hours. Advise the patient to report any swelling or discharge from the site after the PIVC has been removed. The site should continue to be observed for 48 hours post removal for signs of phlebitis. If the patient is discharged before then, advise them of who they should contact should they experience any pain, swelling, discharge or bleeding from the site. Perform hand hygiene after the procedure and document in the patient's healthcare record that the PIVC has been removed, the time and date of removal, if the PIVC was intact or not, and the condition of the site post-removal.